It's too much money here. I mean, nobody should be hitting Lotto for 36 million and we got people starving in the streets. That is not idealistic, that's just real. That is just stupid. Should have a million thousand, drupal billion dollars and then there's people starving. There's no way, there's no way that these people should own planes and their people don't have houses, apartments, shacks, drawers, pants. I know you're rich, I know you got 40 billion dollars, but can you just keep it to one house? You only need one house. And if you only got two kids, can you just keep it to two rooms? I mean, why well, have 52 rooms and you notice somebody with no room? It just don't make sense to me. It don't. And then these people celebrate Christmas. They got big trees, huge trees, all the little trimmings. Everybody got gifts and then somebody's starving. I think that there's when there's hopelessness, people revolt. Because it's like there's nothing that's like, you know, it's like we're going, is America going to help us ever? You know, because I mean, we know for a long time they haven't. Are they ever? And it's like all these things are showing us no. And there's the, you know there's somebody going, no, they're not going to help you. No, they're not going to help you. And then, of course, we see it. No, they're not helping us. All BS aside, it all comes down to we got to survive. I mean, even warriors put their spears down on Sundays. We got to survive here in this country. Because I'm not going back to Africa. We got to survive here. For us to survive here, white folks, black folks, Korean folks, Mexican folks, Puerto Ricans, we got to understand each other. We got to take, take a bigger chance. And when I say Americans, People think I'm talking about Uncle Sam. I mean, like, actually Uncle Sam with the gray hair and the flag. I mean, you. 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 The guy, you know, you. The mechanic, wherever. You. I mean, you need to do something. Because people keep saying, well, what are you doing? What are you doing in the bedding? What are you doing to virgins? What are you doing together? What are you doing? What are you doing? That's where we first came out with, all we're saying is give peace a chance. Literally came out of my mouth as a, as a spoken word to a reporter. After being asked millions and millions of times, what are you doing? Well, what, all I'm saying is give peace a chance. Not that I have the answer or, or I've got a new format for society, because I don't, and show me the plan before we knock all the buildings down, you know? But give peace a chance is, imagine is the same thing, you hit it right in the head, it's just imagine if there were no countries. Not no places where we each had our little spot, but imagine there was a time, you know, when you didn't have to have a passport to go from country to country. What kind of world do we create? Really, it used to be you could go around, you know? What is this game that you can't get that somehow this is America and then just across the, the field is Canada and that you have to have all kinds of papers and pictures and stamps and passports and you know I mean when you think about it it's insane it's insane carving up the world into little patches like that we're all different what we were doing we were early pioneers of that movement which is to project a future which we can have goals which we can reach right people project their own future so what we wanted to do was say, let's imagine a nice future. She's right, which we were doing then, which is projecting the future in a positive way. Now people will say, no, you're naive, you're dumb, you're stupid. We'd, okay, it might have hurt us on a personal level to be called names, but what we were doing, you can call it magic, meditation, projection of goal. I don't think politics is the only answer. I, don't, no. I think this idea that we elect these leaders and then expect them to do miracles for us. We must always maintain a kind of divine discontent. There are certain technical words within every academic discipline which soon become stereotypes and cliches. Every academic discipline has its technical nomenclature. Modern psychology has a word that is probably used more than any other word in psychology, it is the word maladjusted. Now certainly we all want to live the well-adjusted life in order to avoid neurotic and schizophrenic personalities. But I must honestly say to you tonight, my friends, that there are some things in our world, there are some things in our nation to which I'm proud to be maladjusted which I call upon all men of goodwill to be maladjusted 
until the good society is realized. I must honestly say to you that I never intend to adjust myself to segregation and discrimination. I never intend to become adjusted to religious bigotry. I never intend to adjust myself to economic conditions that will take necessities from the many to give luxuries to the few. I never intend to adjust myself to the madness of militarism and the self-defeating effects of physical violence. And I say to you that I am absolutely convinced that maybe the world is in need for the formation of a new organization, the International Association for the Advancement of Creative Maladjustment. And through such maladjustment, we will be able to emerge from the bleak and desolate midnight of man's inhumanity to man into the bright and glittering daybreak of freedom and justice. This shit's got to go.